morning, everyone. I just harvested my broccoli. So it's the next morning. If you watched my garden tour from a few days ago, I got the broccoli harvested. I told you guys at the very end of the video that I was needing to get this harvested. I was waiting till morning though, just to let it cool down and harvest it right crisp in the morning. But I did have a few heads start to show signs that they were going to start flowering. So you can see how this head really isn't uniform, more like this head is, is starting to shoot out a little bit. You can also see a little bit of yellowing on the flower stalk as well. This one has a little bit more. This was my biggest one, but I was really curious just to see where I would end up landing as far as like when harvest would go. Probably should have harvested this two mornings ago, but I'm really not mad about this. I got a good amount of broccoli. I honestly didn't think I was going to end up getting a decent amount. I mean, this is the most broccoli I've ever been able to grow. Broccoli has been a really tough one, especially with our seasons here. Typically in spring, we get warm really fast once we do get warm. And this year we really weren't that cold of a spring. We've been pretty level. We've been in between a lot of 70s and 80s. We did have a few 90s in early May, but other than that, it's been pretty mild so far. Uh, which has been really interesting and it hasn't been like too rainy it's been like the perfect amount of rainy but regardless this is the most i've ever been able to grow i think i'm really going to succeed here come fall winter i did have better success with that in previous years when i attempted the one reason why the one year didn't go as well is because i moved the broccoli halfway through like i literally transplanted it out because it was right when we were doing the whole complete remodel and it was in the way I was like, well, I could either just try to transplant it and try to get something out of it, or I could just toss it. And at that time I didn't have chicken. So it really would have just gone to waste other than like the leaves. So I am going to harvest out some of the leaves. I'm not going to do that today. I might do a little bit of it today. Um, you saw, I gave some of it to the chickens. I love having chickens for the reason being they get to enjoy the garden too. They've been so excited. They keep getting all these little garden snacks and they've been loving it. Um, and I also love it for them, but I do want to, I did dehydrate broccoli leaves in the past to make a broccoli powder to throw into things. And I'm thinking I might do something similar. I'm also thinking I actually might try lettuce wraps with the broccoli leaves. I thought that would might be interesting and I might do that for dinner. So I actually might harvest a few leaves before I go in for the morning. Um, I am going to go ahead and get this inside in my fridge because I do want to get some planting done this morning as well. I have all three of those garlic beds that I need to get replanted out this morning. So let me get this inside. So one thing I forgot to mention with the broccoli is I actually did a hybrid variety called the Bell Star and it was supposed to be just more stress resistant. So I thought it would be a good variety to choose in our environment with just how up and down our temperatures are. Um, and so far it's been proving to be a good one. I do want to play around though with some of the others that might be a little bit more heat tolerant, but overall I really like the Bell Star. All right, so like I said, I have planting to do this morning and I have some Roma tomatoes that I started about, I think seven weeks ago. Now I have what, one, two, I have eight. I have eight here. Then I have a few Genevieve basil, which is your classic Italian basil. I also have a handful of seeds here. So one thing you will see me do all the time is I have green beans on hand. I have bush beans. They mature within 55 to 65 days. So even if you live in a pretty short growing season, you can typically get another wave of, or you can get a wave of beans after you harvest something out, even before your fall crop sometimes. All right, so the plan is two full beds of green beans. I'll maybe pop a few flowers in there, but one bed is going to be tomatoes and basil. So one thing I do need to do with these beds is I'm going to amend them pretty closely to how I amended everything else when I did my soil test. I don't know exactly what this is lacking because I didn't do another soil test, but um, just everything else in this garden was pretty much the same after last fall, which I was kind of shocked on that all the areas were the same. So I did seven different areas just in case there may be an area that would be slightly different depending on the crop I wanted to grow, but they were all low in nitrogen and their pH was slightly high. I did test this pH with a little pH tester. Um, I let it uh, sit and I set some soil in distilled water since distilled water is neutral. I didn't want the water like messing with the pH and it actually said the pH was fine, which I was actually kind of shocked on. Um, so I'm not going to mess with the pH since I tested it and it was sitting at a six. So I don't really want to um, really do 
much else with the pH. I think I'm just gonna add some nitrogen to the soil with some worm castings and get the stuff planted out. Um, I also have, <laughs> it was crazy. Okay, so for example, these are random plants I didn't get planted out anywhere. They didn't have space for them at the time. This loofah in this pot is the same loofah over on my trellis over there. Just shows you how much a thing can be restricted if you don't let the roots go free. Man, the girls went absolutely ham on the broccoli. You know what the beautiful thing is about gardening? Is you just, you can keep changing your mind and that's one of these mornings. I didn't want to overcrowd this bed with all tomatoes, especially with the bird bath didn't want foliage getting wet and stuff. So I'm planting five tomatoes here and then I'm actually going to probably plant some like lower zinnias and stuff that would be really pretty, but yet give um, the fountain, you can still see the fountain really nicely. But I'm gonna put the other three tomatoes right in the middle here and I'm gonna plant out the rest of the beans right through there. Beans are actually a really good um, companion plant for tomatoes because they help fix the nitrogen and tomatoes are more of a heavy feeder. So. I think that will be really interesting to try, honestly. And I, I will like having a visual breakup, I think a little bit. So that's the new plan. Oh, and I also, if I would have put eight here, it would've been really hard to ex like just get the tomatoes. <laughs> I really didn't think that out. Sometimes you make a plan and then you start doing the plan and you realize that plan isn't going to work as well as you originally thought. And sometimes you don't like it and then you just change it because that's how that can go. I do like how this will intermix. So the one thing that I mentioned when I got the bird bath was I was looking up stuff with bird baths and what they could help with. Obviously they attract birds and a lot of people don't really want to attract a lot of birds to their garden. But I was reading that if you want to help deter them from your tomatoes to bring a water source like a bird bath, because most of the time when they go after a lot of your fruits like that, it's because they're thirsty. And that made so much sense to me. So I'll be really curious because the only time the birds really do mess with my stuff is late July into early August when it's in that really super hot streak. And we typically are in a drought at that point. So I'm really hoping that the whole water source will be a good addition. I really loved it so far. You'll see the fountain's really starting to go now. It's a solar fountain. So it really doesn't do anything other than bubble a little bit outside of like the sun getting super bright and whatnot but i really like the fountain it's such a like a it just brings a nice little ambiance to the garden i will say i want this to be a tomato redemption year got a new wheelbarrow the other day in between harvesting the garlic and doing this. It was like, what, the next day, the day after we went and got a new wheelbarrow because it's going to be needed really soon, especially with all the potatoes and such. So I'm gonna get everything watered really well. If you do use Oyas, one thing I will note Make sure to water stuff for a while until roots take, um, because obviously if you just sowed a bean, it's not going to water that surface level that you're going to need your seedling to germinate. Perfect. One more thing I'm going to do before heading inside today, because it is starting to get a little bit warm. So I'm gonna go through with this mulch and just kind of mulch any patchy areas I see.
This bed's been a little patchy up here and it's been getting a little drier than some of the other spots. All right, so I just decided that I was going to make a quiche with some eggs and some broccoli. I have so many eggs and I haven't even collected some. I've been putting them in my fridge actually. Let's see. I'm gonna use the one, yeah. I'm gonna use up the, the head that was slightly going earlier this morning and I think I'm going to blanch and freeze the rest of that here in a little bit. Hi. How are you, handsome? How's my boy? We are about to find out if there is any bugs stuck in our broccoli head. Using a little bit of vinegar in a bowl will release anything that's hanging on. While that soaks, I'm gonna go ahead and get these eggs. I swear, my cats always know when it's time that I can't pet them. It's when they want the most attention. Hi, sweet. <laughs> what is it? What's going on today? What, you want to go downstairs? You can go downstairs. Hold on. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh geez. I'll just make that one for the chickens. What the? Okay. I gotta clean that up. One of my favorite things is seeing how many things I can use from the garden in a dish. These are red chili flakes, uh, cayenne red chili flakes from last year. I'm gonna add a little bit of that and I think that, oh, ooh, I need to add garlic. Where's my, so I had a few really tiny heads that got messed up slightly, but you can see there's purpling in this and the cloves look beautiful. I'm actually gonna go ahead and clean this up and we're gonna use the garlic as well. If you harvest garlic and you have any issues like that where you kind of mess things up or something's a little bit more exposed or it's a really small head like this, go ahead and bring that into your kitchen and use it first. Accident, like some of these, um, what's it called? This one died back quite a bit. Like this clove, look how purpley that is. That is beautiful. I bet this is a chesnook. I ended up messing up last fall. I ended up having all my garlic in one big bucket. Yeah, Sweeney, I messed up. Um, I had it in a, not a bucket, a basket. Um, and then I just kept all my bigger heads and then I forgot which was which. I grew eight different varieties last year, so I have no idea, but this does look like a chesnook red. I love red garlic. And this is my absolute favorite little tool in my kitchen is my little garlic grater. It just works to mince your garlic super fine and oh my gosh, it makes it so fragrant. I'm so happy to have homegrown garlic back in my kitchen. I can't believe I almost forgot this because this will completely change the whole quiche. Like it's that good. So it's looking like in this dish, I'll be using broccoli, red chili flakes, garlic, and my own eggs. So I'm gonna peel this garlic and get it grated up. I'll get you guys a little bit closer when I start to grate so you can see how this thing works. A lot of people ask me where I get them. Um, I got mine at a local like craft fair, but you can find the exact same one on Etsy. Um, if I can find the link to it, I will go ahead and put it in the description box for you guys if you do like this one. It's a pretty standard one. I have had a few people say that they've had the same one. Sometimes when the garlic is fresh like this, 
and the paper isn't dried up, it's easier just to take a knife at the very top to kind of break open that skin. <gasps> oh my gosh, guys, look! Just when I thought there wasn't a caterpillar, I saw a caterpillar in the corner of my eye on the broccoli leaf. I knew there had to be one somewhere. I was like, there's no way I escaped not having anything in that broccoli. Oh my gosh, okay. I gotta give that to the chickens for sure. I'm gonna put you in the jar. Um, yeah, you can go like in that jar. There you go. Keep an eye on you. That is just part of growing your own food. <laughs> I've gotten so used to bugs at this point, and when I first started, wow, I, I, yeah. <laughs> now it's just second nature. They don't really bug me. They don't really do much, but. I forgot to get you guys up close for that, but you can see how fine that is right there. There are some bigger chunks just toward the end where it gets harder to grate. I just caught my husband outside taking a picture of my echinacea. I love it, it's so cute. Oh, I think he's trying to picture him up. There might be a moth or a butterfly. Oh, well, I, I think I see it. If he sends me the picture, I'll put it up right here. <laughs> I'm just greasing a pie dish. I'm doing this crustless today. A lot of times I do crustless egg white quiches, but I didn't feel like using that much eggs. I've wanted a freeze dryer now for four years, and today's the day I get a freeze dryer. We should be able just to lift this right up. At least that's how the video instructed it. Looks good to me. Voila. Voila! And just like that, I'm the owner of a new freeze dryer and I'm so excited to get to use this thing. I don't know where I'm gonna put it yet, but I have a million and one ideas. That's one reason why I didn't wanna use a ton of eggs today, because I actually wanna freeze dry eggs this week. I think that's going to be really cool, especially because the girls are going to stop laying um, at some point this winter, they will. So I wanna stock up a little bit for when it comes to like baking and holiday season, but I'm so excited. So it's been a few hours and I am now getting this, I'm getting the rest of the broccoli cleaned up right now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and blanch it and freeze it. I'm going to flash freeze it on a cookie sheet um, and actually put it into freezer bags here in a few hours. That way none of the florets stick and I can just grab out what I want. Um, I will say the broccoli tastes great. I really liked it in the quiche. The quiche turned out really good so i can't complain on that i'm really happy that i actually just got broccoli this year so this will be nice i'm sure i'll at least get I'll at least get like a freezer bag amount full that's for sure um i have some water boiling on the stove and then i'm gonna get an ice bath ready so what i do when i blanch is i will put them in the boiling water for about one to two minutes and then i will turn around and throw them immediately into an ice bath what that does is it stops the cooking then after that to help get some of the extra water off i'm actually going to use my salad spinner and then i'm going to put it on a freezer or i'm going to put on a cookie sheet with some parchment paper throw it in the freezer for like two to three hours and then at that point i'll throw it in freezer bags and it will be good to go Blanching is one of those things that's super easy. I do it all the time when it comes to vegetables, especially green beans. That's like one of my favorite ways to preserve green beans. I am not a canned green bean girly. No, it's just not it. <laughs> this was my smallest itty bitty head. This was the only one that really didn't end up forming 
much other than one single florette. I got two bowls of broccoli. And I'm actually shocked. I really thought it was going to be about half of this amount, but it turned out to be a good amount of broccoli. Absolutely crazy. So I'm just going to put a few handfuls probably in at a time, just cause I don't want anything going long. Just cause I don't, I don't have too much room in my salad spinner. And I'm only going to do it for about a minute. What blanching does is it kills anything else that we may not have gotten pretty much. So helps uh, keep the color, taste, everything in the freezer. All right. I'm gonna let it sit in this ice bath. And as I go, I will change out this water. I wanna make sure that this water is as cold as possible to make sure that it is stopping the cooking process of the broccoli. We don't wanna overcook it. We're just trying to kill anything else on our broccoli. So now I'm just going to take it and start throwing it in my salad spinner. I randomly, I just got this salad spinner and I was like, you know what? How am I going to get these broccoli like florets a little bit drier, easier? I was like, wait a minute, my salad spinner. And I looked it up and apparently it is like a thing to use with broccoli. And I was like, all right, man, today was a successful day. I really did not think I was going to get this much broccoli. It's a pretty good amount of water. All right, I'm gonna go take this and put it in my freezer downstairs where it can set flat um, for the next few hours and let it flash freeze. randomly, gosh, beginning of March, I started to hand wash all my dishes because I was so over my dishwasher, not cleaning them correctly. And now I've turned into a hand wash only person. I have not used my dishwasher since beginning of March. And honestly, I didn't think that would ever happen to me. Either way, this is my hang, my little hang dryer. I like to use this for chamomile, rosemary, thyme. Um, it works well for peppermint. The one thing I don't really like it for is basil. Um, oregano also works really well in here. I just like to have um, some airflow around it, um, but it works really well just to hang dry, like your flowers, any type of tea, anything that doesn't have a lot of water to it, um, you can typically get away with in here, and they're fairly cheap. This thing's under $20. Been a few hours and the broccoli is not sticking to each other anymore. It's not completely frozen yet. It's frozen enough where I can go ahead and pack it into these bags. I am gonna do two different freezer bags. I'm actually, I might be able to get away with one. Let's see. And then I am going to go ahead and just double bag it because it will help just prevent any type of freezer burn. Awesome. I'm really shocked we got a full, what is this, a gallon size freezer bag of broccoli? That's awesome. I love you. What are you looking at? Hi, baby. Oh, thanks for my cuddles.
All right, now that Khaleesi got some time outside, let's go check on the chickens. I have my broccoli scraps right here. See how many eggs we got for the day. Hi, girls. How are we doing? Hello, hello. My favorite thing about having chickens is how they are just so excited to greet you. I know it's more of a treat thing, but I do think it's like one of the most fun thing about having chickens. I asked my husband, I'm like, do they chase after you like they chase after me? And he's like, yeah, they do. All right, girls, ready? Oh, I don't want to knock any of you in the head. Some of these pieces are decent. There you go. Okay. All right, let's see. I have little locks on all of my doors as like precaution against anything else. All right. All right, well, I only got six eggs today. Um, I think yesterday. Was yesterday an eight agger day? Most of the time, whenever I have a few back-to-back -back eight egg days, I will have a few like six egg days after. I always find that interesting because majority of the time I'm averaging about six to seven, but then I'll have multiple days where I'll just have eight, 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 eight. There's the eggs. I almost forgot to show you. Beautiful eggs. You know, I didn't water earlier because I thought we were going to get rain today. <laughs> that always seems to end up happening. Sweet girls. Come on. All right guys, well, I think this is going to be where I conclude today's video. I've officially hit a wall. I am so tired. Um, I just need to crochet tonight. I have a lot of crocheting I'm doing. Um, I have actually a whole crochet project outside of my temperature blanket right now. Um, and I really need to work on both of those, but I'm gonna shower, eat dinner and work on crochet. That's all I'm going to do this evening. You're not missing out on much, but I hope you enjoyed spending the rest of the day with me. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye.